Hello and welcome. Today we are in the new tier 10 Soviet hybrid heavy cruiser, the Commissar. The ship was given to me by Wargaming. As you can see, the ship is very long. Even longer than Longcat. As a hybrid ship, it obviously has planes. Unfortunately, these are rocket planes and rocket planes suck. Except not that much. They're pretty useful at times. You see, as a cruiser, you are made out of aluminium foil and duct tape. Therefore, sometimes you end up at low HP, and using these rocket planes allows you to deal damage while unspotted. But more than anything else, it allows you to spot things, which can be extremely useful. Only hybrid ships and CVs can do this. This ship is very good at hunting down light cruisers because it has 12 240mm guns which means you can overmatch 16 millimeters of armor, such as the bow or stern of a Minotaur. One of the reasons why rocket planes suck is because they're hard to use, just like right now. I did land a few hits, but it did very negligible damage. If it had been a proper hit, would have been probably pretty effective there. Sadly though, they are pretty difficult to land. Oh, wow, that's a low HP on Halt. Yeah, we're definitely going to try to finish this guy off. Come on. He's healing. I don't know if it's worth it. Maybe I should just wait for the planes because that's going to be a lot of stuff coming in. Now, remember the spotting thing. What you could do is you could launch the plane lock your guns in the di correct direction and then spot with the planes and then take your own shot immediately. Of course, we're not going to do that because, you know, it's a battleship. We are going to just be able to surface spot it. Come on, we just need a fire. It's 12 guns. Fire chance is pretty high. This thing, by the way, with AP can slap for 50% more in a single salvo than Moskva. All the damage per minute wise, they're roughly the same. Unhalt is gone. Great. Now we have to disengage. Remember what I said? When you don't fire the guns, instead launch a plane, you don't get spotted. Which is exactly what I can do right now. That Salem is basically beached, so it should be pretty easy to get a much better drop this time. And, well, while there are a few salvos still incoming, I am unspotted, so... I don't really have to worry about it. Somebody also got quite angry, but I didn't really do anything to him. I just finished him off. It was somebody else that slapped him really hard. Hello, Salem. Would you like some rockets from my express delivery? I mean, the thing is, this is kind of nice to force you know, enemies to actually move. 6k damage, pretty good. And now we just do a follow-up salvo and keep firing. But you do have to be very careful with this. The ship is genuinely pretty easy to punish because it's really, really long, right? I don't think I can actually win like a long-term fight like this. I'm just trying to be annoying. Oh, 20,000 damage. Yeah, that's what happens with a giant stern. I'm gonna fire and we're probably gonna have to be a lot more careful now because we're low HP already. And there's nothing else here that can actually tank. I mean, look at the minimap, right? It's just me, the Des Moines and the Holland. The closest battleship is middle of the map. The enemy, I mean, ally closest battleship. Everything else is enemies here. Let's fall into concealment. And now we can launch our rocket planes. I'm gonna lock the guns so that... Uh, basically, I press Shift-X while pointing at a spot on the minimap or on the map 
because what it does is it keeps the guns pointed in that direction. And my plan is to use these rocket planes and then shoot right after, well, if it's a convenient situation. Oh, Salem is turning, so I think this should be a decent drop. Maybe? It's really hard to tell. They're kind of far. See, we jump back. Sadly, we hadn't swapped AP yet, but... Expert loader, and we should do a pretty quick salvo here. We are low, so we have to be very careful now. Nice. Very nice. I guess it was the Wisconsin that uh, did a lot of damage to the Anhalt earlier. Because he's the only battleship that's over here. I'm unspotted again, so I'm perfectly safe. By the way, this ship does have torpedoes, but because your ship is so big and made out of relatively light armor, if you're in range to use those torpedoes, you're already in a lot of trouble. But I mean, it's always nice to have, right? Nice. The guns on this ship feel very satisfying to use, though. Because you have 12 of them, which means that you're likely gonna get fires, you're likely gonna actually hit pretty hard per salvo. It's just satisfying. Oh! I'm gonna wait until Shikishima fires her guns. Yep, now we can fire, because even if Shikishima starts pointing their guns at me, if I want to, I will go unspotted. And now is a perfect time to launch the plane, because... By the time that Shikishima points her guns at me, I will be in concealment, because I'm using my plane instead. Hmm. I could drop the San Luis, but I think Shikishima is the better target, because she is bigger, way bigger. And she's stationary, basically. Oh, <laughs> never mind. This is such a terrible drop. I hate rocket planes. <laughs> but I mean, we started the fire, so that's good. If we can get more fires, that's even better. Like that. Okay, I think Shikishima is starting to point her guns at me, but we should be okay. Sadly, oh no, Wisconsin was on the other side of the map that died on our team. Oh, another fire. That is excellent news. I'm gonna start turning a little closer. I wanna wait again until Shikishima fires in someone else. Nice torpedoes. She did damage control party, so even if we could fire now, it would be a bit of a waste. Wait until it runs out. Okay, she fired under the mine, so now it's time for me to take a shot. Oh, that was a very nice salvo. Immediate fire too. But I mean, we landed 11 of 12 shells. So that should be kind of expected. And she's gonna come out from behind the island. I'll try to take a shot if she's visible before she does that. Oh, this is kind of annoying. Yeah, we're spotted while doing so. But we would be spotted anyway because of the enemy CV. Oh, nice! Very nice. Very, very nice. I guess it's time to push a little bit. Because what's over here? A San Luis, a Minotaur, and Jinan. Yeah, this is definitely a time to push. We're winning pretty handily, too. We have a lot more ship. Two, I mean, two extra ships. Oh, nice. I think we can fit through that gap, right? Yep. <laughs> Sniped. That's like 25k damage from quite far between the two mountains. <laughs> but remember how I said that this ship is a light cruiser hunter? Well, You'll see it now. That Minotaur's 16 millimeters of armor will not be able to bounce these shells. We'll be able to just get penetrating hits after penetrating hits. Minotaur torpedoes should be fairly easy to avoid. 
she could smoke up, but we should be able to get close enough to still punish her. The only questionable thing that could happen is the CV could get involved in a way where I can't chase far enough. Radar? It's a radar minotaur, so she doesn't even have a smokescreen. That's even better for me. That is very good news, because that means she can't actually hide from me. I could use the planes to spot if necessary. Well, if I had them. Should be able to avoid the torpedoes pretty easily. So overall, the ship feels kind of different. It's pretty fun, I would say. I'm not sure how it ranks on, like, power scale. I think if you're gonna bring a Soviet cruiser, you know, the usual Petras, etc. might end up being better. But it definitely brings something important, which is spotting. So there's definitely potential room for the ship. Ooh, Citadel hit, nice. This is a bit of a sketchy situation. I'm down to... Oh! oh ho, ho, ho. Essex to the rescue! Very well done by that Essex, giving me the smoke screen. He absolutely deserves a compliment for that. I love the hybrid carrier smoke thing. Because it's just so good. It's a type of team play that you don't see with DDs nearly as much because... Well... A destroyer would have to go out of their way to come and smoke you. The CV, well, the same kind of applies, but only a little bit. Because the CV can just fly really fast. Oh. Oh yeah, I guess Commissar would be pretty good at punishing broadside CVs. Because the AP is good enough to punish carriers. And there's quite a lot of it. We can go spot. We could just recall it immediately the moment we see the CV. Yep. And take the shot. The reason I wanted to do it this way is because she's going to continue turning. And by the time I would get close enough with the planes, she might be turned too far that I don't get a salvo like this anymore. Is she not moving at full speed? That's kind of weird. Oh, hello, Jinan. And goodbye, Nahimov. <laughs> well, Jinan is also a light cruiser. These torpedoes were avoided by complete accident. <laughs> oh, I uh, managed to hit the uh, main belt instead of the bow. We should be able to go through the bow. So that's what I'm aiming at. Goodbye. Very nice. This has been a great game. And I put a lot, like, look at that Essex, look at where he is. That guy is actually playing the game as an aircraft carrier. He's in the middle of the map. Damn. I wish all my CV uh, teammates were that good. Okay, we can take a shot on the Wisconsin. In terms of captain skills and upgrades, I think the range upgrade is a great idea on this ship. Because... Quite often, especially if you fight bigger ships like battleships, you will have to engage in these long-range fights. And when that's the case, well, you need the extra range. Other than that, the recommended build with the planes, with a little bit of plane stuff and uh, surface fighting is pretty good. Can we add the Wisconsin to our list? I guess not. Well done, Essex. This Essex was really good. But here is the Commissar. Overall, I'd say it's a very fun ship. It was a bit of an exceptional game, though. I mean, I got a lot of help from my friendly Essex, and I ended up fighting two light cruisers, basically straight up. So I was in my element, especially after we were able to take out the Salem and the flank fell apart. Also, remember to give compliments to the players that you think did well. Damage-wise, yeah, we did a lot of damage with the guns. 200k. The planes only did 19k, but I didn't use them very well. Could have easily been like another 10k at least. But it is, you know, a gun-focused trip still. 
Look at all these ships that I hit. Damn. What an amazing game. We also had a very surprisingly high potential damage amount, 1.7 million. Speaking of which, let's take a look at the armor scheme of the ship. Of course, the bow plating is 25mm, which is easily overmatchable, the middle is 30mm, and the stern, the absolutely ginormous stern, is also 25mm. Like, look at the length of that! Oh, the ham. But then, the citadel isn't that well protected either, it sits high in the water and it's only 115 millimeters of armor. At least, the citadel doesn't extend to the ginormous stern, but nevertheless, you can very easily be punished in this ship. So, should you get the steel ship? Well, as you just saw, I don't have it. I think there are a fair few steel ships that you should get before this one. Once you get into the time of where you're like, okay, should I get the Austin because it's like a nice meme ship or the Plymouth or something, then you could consider the ship. But before you get your Stalingrads and uh, Shikishimas, I wouldn't recommend it. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I would like to thank the patrons on Patreon. Thank you very much for your continued support and I hope I'll see you guys next time.